Well, good morning. Uh, we invite you to Mass Memorial uh, Christian Methodist Episcopal Church for our morning worship service here in Lansing, Michigan on Sunday, October the 18th, 2020, the 20th Sunday of Kingdom Tide. My name is Reverend Adrian Swanigan, and on behalf of the officers, uh, the members, the visitors, and friends of Mass Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, we welcome you. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent. We will now unite in this, in this historic confession of the Christian faith. Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Good morning, Mass Memorial and friends. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for another day in the land of the living. 
Thank you for keeping us in these turbulent times of COVID-19. We are praying for our church, ministerial staff, congregation, and friends. Praying for the church universal and every entity that's connected to it. Those that are sick physically and mentally, the little children, we are standing in the gap for them. Praises go up to you, Lord, for loving us and protecting us. Help our ailing hearts to forgive others of trespasses and give us a heart that reaches out to others. Bless our community, federal, state, and our sitting president. Remember your promise to Abraham that we will be blessed in spite of enemy opposition. Keep our minds and hearts stayed on you so we cannot fall. And if we do fall, help us back to the place of redemption. We thank you this morning for your new mercies and grace and that we would allow your light to shine from our temple. We love you, Lord. We cannot make it without you. We cannot fail to forget how you got us over. Thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus. For without him, we can do nothing. Heal our land and take away this pestilence that lurks around us. Now hear us, Lord, hear our cries and comfort every burdened soul. Thank you for another hour of worship. Grant us our spoken and unspoken request this morning. And we won't forget to praise and glorify you, exalt and magnify you in the name of Jesus, both now and forevermore. Amen. Good morning, church. This morning's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. I will be reading the New King James Version, subtitled, A Man Healed at the Pool of Bethesda. And it reads, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there, he knew that he already had been in that condition a long time. He said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. I have read for your hearing the Gospel of St. John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. That is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Just a few uh, congregation announcements uh, this morning. Uh, we have a planning slash conference, church conference on Saturday, October the 24th. Uh, it will be a virtual meeting. Uh, it'll be at 1030 and we will send out the access code uh, for that uh, virtual meeting. Also, a uh, happy birthday to all October birthday celebrants. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. 
Also on uh, this evening at 5 p.m., uh, there will be a conversation with our general officers of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Again, uh, this evening, October the 18th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, meet our general officer, officers of the church. It will be uh, on a, our live face on the live Facebook site. So just scroll to uh, the official CME uh, page and you will get more information on uh, that uh, Facebook live uh, conversation with our general officers. Our missionary society here at Mass Memorial uh, Christian Methodist Episcopal Church under the leadership of uh, Sister Deborah Plummer will have a missionary virtual prayer breakfast that will be Saturday, October the 31st, uh, 2020, at 9 o'clock a.m. And the theme is Nutrition for the Soul. Uh, and it's based on a passage of Psalm 34 and 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Bring your breakfast to the table and pray with us. God bless you. Those are the announcements at this time. Amen. Uh, I preached a message on love uh, a few weeks ago, which, which lines up with our lectionary, lectionary uh, passage selection for this week. So I'm going to bypass the lectionary passage and preach from another selected passage from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. Uh, Thank the person who read it earlier. Again, I will just read it again. St. John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 10 from the New King James Version. And it reads, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called 
in the Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, uh, but while I'm coming, Another steps down before me. And Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. That day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. Amen. Again, from this passage, we like to use this subject or this question, ask this question, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just before I start this message, I'd like to thank uh, Brother Mark, uh, Marcus Martin for an outstanding message on last Sunday. God bless you, my brother. Do you want to be made whole? I don't know which is worse, to never have had what you need or be forced to look every day for what you need and not be able to reach it. You can see it but you can't seize it. You can hear it, but you can't have it. You can smell it, but you can't taste it. You can look at it, but, but you can't touch it. You know what you need, and you are forced to be near it, but you cannot have it. And that's like someone with a driver's license, but no car to drive. That's like someone with a car with no driver's license. That's like a bird in the cage looking at other birds fly. Uh, that's like a hungry man outside of a bakery begging for bread. It's close, but you can't have it. You can look at it, but you can't touch it. Has, it, has anyone been there to see what you desperately need to fall short of what you must have, but you just can't reach it. And this is the, the dilemma of this lame man in our text. Uh, he was ever so close to his deliverance, but he just couldn't reach it. Here he was waiting uh, for uh, the proper time to enter into a pool to be healed of his paralysis. Uh, the pool in our text is called the Pool of Bethesda. It had the reputation of being a healing pool. And the people came from all parts of Palestine to be healed in this pool. And there was this superstition that an angel would come down at a certain time and, and trouble the waters and the first one to step in the pool, they would be healed of their sickness. And so it was that this man had been sitting at this pool for 38 years, trying to be the first to get into the pool. At, at the same time, the angel would come down to trouble the waters, but he just couldn't reach it. He just couldn't receive his miracle because somebody 
would always get in the pool ahead of him. But on this particular day, Jesus shows up at the pool. After 38 years, this lame man was trying to get into the pool as the angel troubled the water. Jesus came near to the pool. Then Jesus came near to this lame man and asked him this question. Do you want to be made whole? And I believe in my sanctified imagination, what this man replied, what kind of question is that? Do I want to be made whole? Of course I want to be made whole. Do you think I would be sitting here if I didn't want to be made whole? What kind of a question is that? I believe Jesus replied and said to him, well, the reason why I ask you this, do you want to be made whole? Because you've been sitting here for 38 years waiting for some angel to come down and trouble the water, waiting to be made whole. I believe the lame man said, sir, I, 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 would, I would have been made whole except for my experience, my experience. You see, I've been coming to this pool for 38 years, and that's longer than you've been on earth. 38 years, my experience shows me that I've, and I've never been made whole. You have to be careful when you base everything on your experience. Because if you sit in the same place, hang out with the same crowd, having the same conversations, doing the same things, don't be surprised if you don't experience change. But if you want to be made whole, you're going to have to change your experience. You're going to have to have a new experience. Stop looking at the past experience and get a new experience. I believe the lame man could not be made whole based on his experience. Another reason that I believe this lame man could not be made whole was because of the experts. The experts, the medical experts, you know, they told me I would never walk again. I've had tests, I've had x-rays, I've had MRIs, I've had operations, and the medical experts, they tell me that I'll never walk again. And not only did the medical experts tell me I would never walk again, the religious experts told me it was the Sabbath day. I wasn't supposed to take up my bed and walk. They told me I had to wait for my deliverance. I have nothing but respect and admiration for experts, but, but did you know that the experts can be wrong? Sometimes experts, you know, they give wrong prognosis. They give the wrong diagnosis. Sometimes the experts give wrong advice. The experts, you know, can speak things over your life and you start to believe that what the experts say, you see. But before you believe what the experts say, you and I need to get a second opinion. Yes, in 2006, the American economist Ben Bernanke, an expert and chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States, declared that the United States economy was fundamentally sound. However, a few months later came what, econo what ec economists considered the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression, resulting in evictions and foreclosures and unemployment uh, and uh, failures in businesses. In 2018, President Donald Trump says that he built the greatest economy ever in the United States history. And prior to the coronavirus outbreak, Trump claims to have generated historic economic growth, record low unemployment, and left millions of Americans out of poverty. However, as the coronavirus continues to spike in various states around our nation, and whatever gains under the Trump administration's economically has been lost, and as Congress is in a deadlock at, on a stimulus package, 
that would kickstart our economy into a positive direction. Whatever the experts say, whatever the economists say, whatever President Trump says, we need a second opinion. Whose report will you believe? My brothers and sisters, I will believe the report of the Lord. Well, the experts said those things about this man. They spoke things over him, and they, the experts spoke things over your life as well. You know, but thank God, you refuse to believe what the experts predicted. You proved the experts wrong. The experts said that you would never go to college, but you've already got, been to college and graduated. The experts said that, that you wouldn't survive, but not only are you surviving, you are thriving. The experts said that uh, you would be in jail right now, but in 2020, you're still free, regardless of how bad the year is. You are free indeed. The experts said that you're going to die, but in 2020, here you are. You're still alive. Amen. And you outlive the expert that predicted your early death. Is there anybody here who know that God and can testify? that God has, has a better opinion and has the best second opinion, and he can prove the experts wrong. God is right all the time. Is there anybody here who can testify that God can overrule any expert prediction? The lame man would declare he was lame because of his experience. The lame man would claim that he is lame because of what the experts predicted. Uh, but I believe this lame man would go also say that he was lame because of bad examples, bad examples. You know, people, you know, they get in the pool before me. You know, I, I, I don't know when the angel was coming down to trouble the waters. I, I don't have anybody to help me to the water. So I have bad examples. Folk that won't help me, family won't help me. I'm trying to be made whole. People try to use that excuse why they can't accomplish anything in life. If you don't have good examples, then you be an example. Be the first person to get into the pool. Be the first person in your family to get a college degree. Be the first person in your family to travel all around the world. Be the first person in your family to buy a house. Be the first person in your family to stay in your marriage. Be the first person in your family to open up a business, to buy property, to run for political office. If you can't find a good example, then you be the example. Be a trailblazer. Be a pioneer. Do something no one else has done. Be the first in history to do it and stop looking at other bad examples. Be the example. And even if you have bad examples, bad parents, bad politicians, bad people in the community, bad priests, bad pastors, bad preachers, bad police officers, be determined to be a good example to everyone you meet. God has put you here for a reason. You are here to be an example. Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Don't ever sit in any one place 38 years. Be a good example. Yes, and I believe this lame man would say he's been waiting for 38 years for his deliverance because of his experience, because of what the experts predicted, because of his bad examples. And I believe the lame man would also say, I'm here because of my expectation. What do you expect me to do? Uh, they bring me here and, and, and someone is fortunate to get in the pool before I do. And then I just go home unhealed. They, they carry me off. And I've been doing this for 38 years. Why should I expect anything different? Today, 
will be the same as the 37 years before. Why should I expect anything different? But, but what he did not know was this day was not going to be the same day as the 37 years before. Because this day was the day he met Jesus. He met Jesus. Do you remember that day you, you met Jesus? Do you remember the hour you met Jesus? The day you met Jesus, you will remember. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how poor you are. The day you meet Jesus, you will remember. I don't know about you, but I remember that day. I remember that hour that I met Jesus, May 27, 1978, in my friend's Morris Hobson's living room in Highland Park, Michigan, I gave my heart to Christ. I looked at my hands, and my hands looked new. I looked at my feet, and my feet did too. I know I was changed because the angels in heaven signed my name. Yes, I've been redeemed on that day. I, that day I came to Jesus. I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, worn and sad, but I found in him a resting place. He, he made me glad. Two weeks later, I attended the church of our Lord Jesus Christ where the late Bishop Bonner, William Bonner, baptized me. Hallelujah, I stepped into the water. The water was cold, chill my body, but not my soul. I remember the day I met Jesus. Do you? And, and what the lame man did not know was this day was not going to be like other days because this day was the day he met Jesus. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy over my soul like sea bellows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, it was, it was different because this was the day that the power of the pool came to this lame man. He didn't have to come to the pool. The power of the pool came to him. Instead of waiting for an angel, this would be the day that God, who wrapped himself in human flesh, would come to him. Is there anybody glad that the power of the pool comes to you? The power came to Abraham and made him a father of many nations. The power came to Jacob and gave him a name a new name, the power came to Gideon. He took 300 men and defeated 300,000 Midianites. The power came to Moses and he started a liberation movement. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. The power came to Daniel. Amen, they threw him in the lion's den and the lion said, we can't eat Daniel. Aren't you glad that the power came to you? The pool came to you. Times when you were struggling, times when you were sick, times when everybody turned their back on you, the power of the pool came to you. God will come to you when friends and loved ones forsake you. God will come to you when folk in the church have ostracized you. God will come to you when folk in the church have talked about you. Amen. God will come to you when you feel like you can't go any further. That day, the power of the pool came to this lame man. Then the power uh, in the pool made it clear to him that his deliverance was up to him. His deliverance was up to him. This, this, this was the question. Do you want to be made whole? Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. It's up to you. Do you want to be made whole? Paul declared according to the power that works in you. You've got some power in you. You've got delegated authority in you, in you, in you. You see, greater is he in you than he who is in the world. Your deliverance is up to you right now. You can be made whole. And listen, I know it's this political season, if you're tired of racism, sexism, 
police brutality, if you're tired of hatred, lies from the government, it's up to you. If you're tired of seeing the rich get richer and the poor get poor, it's up to you. The power of the pool in the pool is in your hands on November the 3rd, 2020. Make the change, make a change if you want to be healed of the coronavirus. The power is in you. Be made whole right now in the name of Jesus. Your deliverance is up to you. The power in the pool came to him. The power in the pool told him his deliverance is up to him. Then the power in the pool started waiting on him. You see, you've been waiting here for 38 years, but at this very moment, now is the pool waiting on you. It's amazing. He's been waiting for 38 years. Now Jesus shows up. Now the pool is waiting on him. Jesus said, just, just, he just, just rise up, take up your bed, and walk. Jesus gave him three commands. Get up, get your stuff, and get going. And that's what the Lord is saying to you and I today. Get up, get your stuff, and get going. You've been down too long. You've been sad too long, broke too long, bound too long. Get up, get your stuff, and start going. Nobody, nobody ever uh, told this to this man like this. Nobody ever talked to this man like this. The woman at the well said, nobody ever spoke to me like, like this man. But Jesus told this man, he could do it. He could make it. And when the lame man heard faith, when he heard power, when he heard encouragement, when he heard positivity, when he heard confidence, he got up, took up his bed, and started walking. Today I say to you, get up, get your stuff, and get going. God bless your hearts today. There may be someone today who does not know Christ in the pardon of your sin. There may be someone today. You have been bound for over 38 years. It's time for you to get up, get your stuff, and get going. I right now extend to you the invitation to Christian discipleship. There may be one. You say, well, I've been waiting for 38 years. What do I need to change? The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, according to Romans 3.23. But you know what? Christ has already took care of that for you because sin has its consequences. He's already taken care of that for you. According to Romans 6, 23, it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ who died for us. And then according to uh, Romans 4, 8, that God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. All you have to do is accept it. And then according to uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. And then verse 13 says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you have to do is call it. Let's pray. You pray with me. It's called the, the prayer of salvation. Let's bow you, just bow your heads right now where you are. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that you died, buried, and rose again for me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please leave a comment below. We'd like to be in contact. We'd like to stay in contact with you. Also, if you're sitting there, you need a church home. And you live and you're in the Lansing area. And you say, Well, I, I need a church home. I want to invite you uh, to one of uh, a family church, a loving church who will embrace you, mass memorial will wrap their arms around you and give you the love and the support you need. You need a church home. I invite you to make 
Mask Memorial, your church home. You, I'll take you in right now. I pronounce you a member of Mass Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Leave a comment below. Let me know that you have joined this church. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. I want to thank each and every one of you for attending this wonderful worship experience. We pray something was said that encouraged your heart and lifted you during these very difficult times. I encourage you to do your part on November the 3rd and vote. We have too much at stake for you to stay home. I want to thank our Sunday School Department. Thank Sister Sharon Griffin for that wonderful uh, Sunday School lesson. I thank our, our musician, uh, Brother Marcus Martin, uh, for the music. I want to thank uh, Reverend Dudley King uh, for that very uh, spiritual prayer. Brother Nelson for reading the scriptures. And also I thank Brother Nelson for putting uh, this uh, tech service, this service together. We depend on him each and every week, and I, he does an outstanding job. Amen. I just want to thank everyone who participated in this service. Now I ask you this last question. Do you want to be made whole? Get up, get your stuff, and get going. The doxology. The benediction, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you henceforth now and forever. Church of God said with one voice.